I'm sure you were able to watch it live on PC Gamer, but um, the only thing that was worthwhile watching was their supermarket sweep on Steam, where they give away $1,200 worth of games in three minutes, which was uh, pretty impressive. Essentially, the girl who was playing it uh, went into Steam, listed all of them by US releases and by price, and just added everything that had been announced at E3 so far, all the pre-orders, everything she could get her hands on, which was the smartest thing you could do, really. So we're on a one minute countdown now for the PC Gaming Show. You can see that um, it doesn't look, considering it's only got a minute to go, it's not a full auditorium for the PC Gaming Show, which is a bit weird. Um, I would imagine PC Gaming being one of the bigger streams of the day, but um, obviously not so much. I <laughs> don't know why. All right, I got 20 seconds to go. Got 21 seconds to go. Got 21 seconds to go. So yeah, um, we've already done Microsoft this morning. We'll be going to Ubisoft after this. I don't think there'll be much of a break in between, but um, we will break the show and then restart again for archiving purposes. So let's get started. Woo! I don't know, what, I don't know why I'm so giddy. I'm, I'm not a PC gamer. Uh, well, I'm definitely not a gamer, PC gamer on stream. I generally don't, uh, just because I'm... Um, I, I play my PC games in my own time. I would love to be doing more stri PC streams in the future. It's just the fact that um, I, I would, I'd rather have an independent system for uh, streaming and an independent system for gaming separately before I actually decided to go and do PC gaming streams all the time. This is actually fairly new to me streaming on Twitch as it is, so uh, I'm, I'm surprised it even works as it is, which is a good start. Being surprised that your own hardware works is always a good example of actually being well prepared. <laughs> oh. So, what are we expecting for the PC gaming show? Uh, this is uh, sponsored by AMD, which is surprising. Um, I would have thought it might be a NVIDIA sponsored conference. NVIDIA really are owning the PC market with their uh, the release of the 1080 uh, GTX 1080 lately, which is um, still, I don't know if there's actually an AMD comparative card that actually is coming out on that same price line and power level. So I'm sure we'll find out more about that shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PC Gaming Show! Hey! Not exactly a full audience, but yay! Day nine, I will be your host for today's show. Good morning, it's so wonderful to have you here. Man, your Hello, tie is Twitch. weird. I'm so glad you typed in the right URL to be here. A huge thanks again to PC Gamer and AMD for putting on the show again, huh? Good stuff. Yeah, fair play to them. In this beautiful theater that honestly looks like a level from Diablo 3, I'm excited because it's the day before E3, which for a gamer is basically the day before Christmas. And we're going to kick it off it is on day true. zero with 100 it is the minutes day of Christmas PC for so many people. content. Hey, sorry, I just time to get audio levels here checked, right? To talk about all sorts of exciting updates go. and exclusives that I can't wait to share with you. So without any further ado, for all of you here in the audience, for okay. all of you at home, okay. join me this morning and let's celebrate PC gaming. Woo, let's celebrate PC. All right, here we go, this is our first Hype real, hype real. So, what am I recognizing here on this? Uh, Ark, Survivor, Fallout 4, Witcher, Overwatch, Doom. What the fuck was that? Stardew Valley, Subnautica. Um, oh. Very many games I'm not massively familiar with. But I'm sure I will learn more as the hour goes by. Ha, <laughs> Rocket League. To finish it off with. Right, so PC Gaming Show, powered by PC Gamer, brought by MD. Let's see what they got. Let us begin. <laughs> uh, I like the fact that they went for a desk on this one instead. Bring out our very first guests, who are going to be introducing the third incarnation in their famous RTS series, Dawn of War. From Relic Entertainment. The Warhammer Join series, Dawn of War, have been a really interesting RTS Disbrow. series. I know a lot of friends of mine that are massively into it because of their Welcome. Please enjoyment join of Warhammer. Hey, <laughs> I, just, was the bloody, I swear to God, I thought that was a bloody angel, and of angel course, statue. Space Marine, hello. 
who yes. ever they got to be standing like on must be melting. Behind our conversation, so that's what so, cosplayers you know, do, way, and cosplayers way, want. Dawn of War one, much more base building focus. Dawn of War two, much more squad focus. What's the direction Dawn of War three is going in? Yeah. Well, with Dawn of War three, we're taking those proven mechanics, those proven gameplay styles of the epic battles of Dawn of War one and the uh, elite heroes of Dawn of War two, and we're putting them together with a whole bunch of new mechanics we're introducing that we think is going to create an entirely exciting new version of Dawn of War. And I understand we have some gameplay footage to show cool. off right away. We do, for the very first time, we're getting to show gameplay footage from Dawn of War 3. I am so excited to finally be able to share this with all of you, everyone watching at home. It's going to be awesome. Now, keep in mind, this is still in development, so we shouldn't rush to judgment immediately. But let's go ahead and totally do that with this first look at Dawn of War 3 <laughs> gameplay. A world premiere! While the enemies of the Emperor still draw breath, there can be no peace. So how well do you know the world of Warhammer 40k? My knowledge of actually 40k is very focused on the Tau, because that's who I played in tabletop. There's no time. They'll kill you! Try. Okay. <laughs> the idea of such a hero base kind of squad combat. Ooh, big damage. Somebody drop pods. You know what? Seriously, looking at the gameplay in this, it looks so <laughs> much like Halo Wars. Oof. Big dangerous machines. Space Marine Exterminators, is it? Terminators? Terminators or Exterminators? Jesus. Wipe and I ground troops. It's one of those things I always like about whenever I'm watching people play on RTS or RTS games general is like, so much death! They're where we want them. Hold the lines! Open fire! Warp gate is yours. Cool. So there was very little, there was no base building in that really. That was very squad based combat that we saw. Um, curious to find out more about Warhammer 40k, which I'm sure they'll tell us all about now. That's the 40k license has been spread out to so many companies now. It is a that shotgunning approach. I think extra credits brought up in one of the recent episodes that how they've been working with their license previously. They kept it to one source, and then now they've kind of like shot it out to everybody as possible to see which stuff sticks. And the Dawn of War series is one that has persisted. I think the last time a Warhammer 40k game I played was Space Marines, which was actually a pretty good third-person action shooter. At the same time, Gabriel Angelos, the Chapter Master of the Blood Ravens, one of our elite heroes and the returning story hero for Dawn of War. Lady Solaria, our Imperial Knight, that giant robot, which is the biggest and best unit we've ever done. The Space Marines as a whole with their drop pod mechanic, which we call Death From Above, if you saw them in action. And then just a hint of that great space laser. Yeah, okay, I was going to ask, because yeah. you use bombardment that they can actually throw from both. in reference to the huge space laser. Tell me about the space laser. So the space laser is their super ability, orbital bombardment. It's sort of the end game ability for the space marines, where you get to drop this giant finger of God laser from the sky. <laughs> finger of you God. You can control it like a squad. So you can actually move it around the field. It gets bigger as it does more damage, but it slows down. So there's a bit of counterplay there as the enemy can get out of the way. Right. But right. it just feels awesome. So what are we on uh, PC now, Brett, gaming? Tell me a little bit about what it's Showcase. like to design Just because a I need to update the, the um, universe. content on it's, it's great. our stream uh, here. You know, the Warhammer universe is very rich. Uh, and you know, <clears> what we're doing with Dawn of War 3's campaign is we've 
we're telling the epic story that fans, players expect. And we're telling it from uh, the viewpoint of three special heroes uh, that are representing each faction. And it's a tale that kind of interweaves between their perspectives, uh, allowing players to kind of experience uh, the armies as they go through the game. And so was that footage from the single player campaign? That's from uh, an excerpt, it's excerpted from our E3 mission. Uh, right. But that E3 mission is uh, part of a bigger mission. So when we release the game, uh, what you'll see is that E3 mission, that cool footage, in the context of, uh, of a larger mission. So cool. And yeah. I understand that there's, there's even some more footage coming up down the line? Yeah, we'll be sh releasing full footage of that E3 mission on uh, Twitch and YouTube on June 24th. All right. Too easy, just in time for my birthday. Well, happy Don't birthday. Forget. Yeah. Then don't forget, <laughs> right. Now, guys, thank you so much for being our very first guest to come out on the stage. Thank you, Space Marine. With your beautiful yeah, sword. man, that Space Marine has to be cooking. <laughs> Looks pretty badass well, costume-wise. Thank you, everyone. Thank God, you. respect the bloody now, angels. Well, the minute he's getting lost in the background of the studio, stage. You might not have heard of Clay Entertainment, but you've almost certainly heard of their games. Yeah, woo, that's what I'm talking about, audience participation. <laughs> yeah, woo. They made the games Mark of the Ninja the cousin of Yahweh. Starve. Let's take a look at their upcoming title, Oxygen Not Included. Oxygen Not Included? All right. So what is this? Makers don't starve. Clay, I kept on saying, look at that, going like C L A Y, K L E I. Right. So uh, kind of like a base building survival game. <laughs> Late 2016, early 2017. Even how much I enjoy dying and don't starve. <laughs> I like the fact they glitched out on that a bit. Not included. Now, our next guests are Absolute Sensation on Twitch TV, where they make a game filled with dinosaurs. Let's bring out the creators of Ark Survival Evolved. It's Jesse and Forrest Rapsack. Okay. So are we getting another look at uh, Ark Survivor Evolved Welcome, in some way, shape, or form? Good to see you, Jesse. Good to see you, Forrest. Good to see you. Come join me on the stage. I mean, right away, I have to ask what it's been like to have such a rabid community and so many people just creating content around your game. It's insane. When we put out the mod tools last year, uh, something PC gaming is huge, uh, yeah. passionate about. We've had a few mod contests already. We've gotten really amazing stuff from the creators. We've hired a few of them because their mods were so good. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, we hope to do more of <laughs> nice. this. Making I more, like that idea uh, of actually employing from within your community, especially if they are really actively amazing. involved in the development yeah. of uh, extra yeah, bits you have some new content you want to oh, show yeah. with us today, a new bio, we are pumped. a new damn dinosaur. That's right. Oh, lovely. Walk me through what we're seeing here, Jeff. So this is the Redwood Biome. It's a place that's unlike any other on the Ark. There's giant ancient trees that can't be harvested, which affords players the ability to build treetop bases. God damn, Ark Survival uh, and, Evolved and looks so much prettier now than it did whenever it first came out. Resources that can only be found in the Redwood Biome. And as you can see, it's just a like gorgeous looking place. Grappling hooks are very useful in this biome. And we're really excited to get this thing out so players can have that new diversity on the island. I mean, it's kind of incredible, like the, the rich depth in the background, just sort of seeing all the sort of looming danger there, which is really a core piece of Ark's gameplay. Hmm. That's exactly correct. All right, and here's this, the dinosaur. Jesse, stop this, what you're saying. Tell me about the dinosaur. <laughs> this is the Titanosaurus. This guy's been a long Titanosaur? time. Titanosaur? What? The biggest dinosaur on the island. Really? This is carries a city on its back? Only a few of them. Uh, they're, they're kind of indestructible. You can build giant bases on them. Their attacks are devastating. And they Boom! Can't, yes, they can't be tamed in a traditional way. They're immune to narcotics. They require a special takedown method related to kind of KOing them in the head with some bigger uh, artillery. See, so, the idea that you can't tame them, but can you start build building on them before you tame them? <laughs> on the dinosaur. Yeah, science tells that's, us that's possible. Of course. <laughs> Arc based on real science. <laughs> Now, modding, obviously, a huge part of just Ark's culture. I mean, talk to me a little bit about this mod. This is actually Primitive Plus. Can you guys see yeah. Jesse, go ahead. Yeah, Primitive Plus is uh, a, a mod that we've created, uh, or Cedric created, one of our, our community uh, guys originally that came in-house. And he's been working on this for a while. It's been available to uh, PC gamers for quite some time. But we're making it an official mod now. Uh, this will be uh, later in July. We'll be putting 
working on our official servers. And this will allow people to easily get into this mod, which is really good for uh, role playing. It's living off the land. It's got a whole lot of new resources. Sorry, guys, I'm not talking uh, quite so much. I mean, I'm enjoying looking up here, at really the stream that's going on, but I'm also doing really exports of the uh, Microsoft right, Conference yeah. now and on to the YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, storefronts, uh, ways for people to trade uh, things. Uh, I mean, it's really awesome. And, and this is just an example of one of those mods that was created. There's so many other things available yeah. right now through our mod. You can play Ark on the Moon with Ark Moon Survival. There's new competitive game modes like Tribe Wars. There's new maps all over the place yeah. that have been just been opening up the world for people to play Ark. And another of the mods that you brought in, and I, I, my understanding is that these are brought in-house now to be Some part of, them of the are, official yeah. launch as well. Right. That you get to play any animal in the game. <laughs> play as any animal? Interesting. That's right, one of our partner developers, Instinct Games, is actually developing this out of Egypt. And they have been working on this for a little while, and it's so exciting because you can play as the creatures of Ark go through their life cycles from uh, babies uh, to adults. Uh, you know, we started Ark and, and we added the, the poop button, and, and in this mod, you have the mate button. Because as these are of, these are important buttons. They are buttons for the yeah. content. Really. <laughs> yeah. button versus you know, the poop button. It's, it's great. Important. Button remapping all the hardware carriers yeah. are really going crazy over this. But no, the the goal is to uh, create a pack, right? <laughs> to create a pack of creatures and uh, play with that the, that pack of creatures, make new uh, babies, raise them, level them up. Uh, you can uh, play kind of asynchronously against the other species on the island. Of course, there's all sorts of uh, people choosing different types of dinosaurs. Yeah, and we then predator yeah, predator it's an interesting every, idea to actually. Dinosaur has a unique. Kind well, of living in this arc, that you don't vision. have to course, play as the humans. The as well. Yeah, yeah, Forrest, what are they doing there? <laughs> well, you know. They're throwing poop. poop. Flinging. That's what they do. That's what monkeys do. Wow. I think the monkeys are going to be very popular. <laughs> Critical buttons upcoming yeah, in the I next think release. Like playing as the monkeys. So yeah. once again, Arc you know, Primal this is going to be an survival. Mod. Instinct Games, our partner yeah. team out of Egypt, developing this. So is Primal Survival an expansion uh, DLC mod. kind of thing, or so do you think a standalone game? But it's, like involved. they said, it's asynchronous gameplay. Content for the community. What's that experience been like? Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, our community is just absolutely outstanding. Um, they get so involved and are so, it, honestly, so creative. I mean, we really try to incorporate ideas that the community comes up with when we find things that we think are like, we should have thought of that, you know? So. Well, you're, you're gonna give me the gift of being able to role play as an ant and leave sense everywhere. Totally. And honestly, <laughs> sex fog, though, everywhere. So watch on out. all the surfaces. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse and Forrest Rapsack from Ark Survival Evolved. Guys, thank you so much for coming Thanks, out. Thanks, John. Thank you. <laughs> now, I normally like to do a little spiel to lead into each thing, to just frame it, but for this one, I don't have to. All I'm gonna do is tell you the title. Up next, we have Giant Cop. Giant what? You should try it, man, it's very free. Giant Cop? Coming to Micro Beach used to be a great natural experience. Do some naked sunbathing, naked barbecue, naked hula hoop, naked Sudoku. Doing Not naked so things, you know. It all started going downhill when they brought in that giant. People have no decency today. <laughs> I couldn't even go to the beach without seeing peckers and hoo ha's everywhere. But the beach is a much nicer place now. I can take Ah, uh, so it's a vibe game or an Oculus game where you're picking up naked people off the beach. That giant cop is great, like a super detective. My prized petunia plant beauty was stolen. I was heartbroken. I gave giant cop a picture of my beauty, and that dirty thing was it. quickly <laughs> dealt with. <laughs> Michael City's That's not brilliant. the same anymore, man. Like you uh, no. Don't be attacking... Oh, attacking protesters. I no longer fear walking home. Now the giant cop has eyes everywhere. The you see what you're doing on that plant, safer. baby. Our police force is top-notch. And, and our city has never been better because of it. I am happy to have the giant cop here to serve us. Giant cop is the greatest. <laughs> the giant cop is watching you. 
I'm going to take over the town. It feels like a kind of, uh, <laughs> I like the fact that the giant cop is actually a pair of hands and glasses. <laughs> Don't even bother rendering the whole body, you know yeah. that, right? Innovation but the, the um, Told you I didn't need to tell you. The anything. idea of it essentially kind of lifts the most fun part of black and white, with, uh, which was to combat. lift your villagers and throw them across the map way. because you're annoying at them, next, or just sit there and slap them. Coming up next, we have <laughs> or is that just you slapping the monkey? Spank the monkey! Yeah, yeah! Spank the monkey! So what is this? Hmm. Oh, oh, that's harsh. <laughs> so, siege combat, war, fields. This does. Uh, is this another kind of like, oh, this is Mountain Blade? It has to be by the style of it. The Mountain Blade is one of those games series that never looks like it should be on the most current releases or anything. I mean, again, from eight years ago, but they are very, very good. I personally like the Vikings one, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord. Yeah, it is Mountain Blade. Great game series. I have a full collection Join of those and I've played through them. I think for involving storyline and uh, for Frank you know, a little bit of choose combat, but it's a very good game series that I recommend anybody to pick up on Steam. Damn good. It's so good to see you again. Thanks, hey, Bob. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Frank, I, I just want you to start off by talking a little bit about what is Mountain Blade for those who are unfamiliar. Okay, to summarize very, very quickly, Mountain Blade is an action RPG strategy simulation sandbox uh, very like amalgam of all those genres and what you are is essentially you're like a, a just a, a regular person in the world You can become a lord you can rule your own faction you fight in the battles You must walk your way up from the ground up well. peasant. There's politics, there's trade. You're really, it's a very much a, a feudal simulation game Yeah, and I mean like feudal I, simulation I combat earlier I mean a lot of games have you hit the button to do the punch Plus. But I mean in Mountain Blade, it's much more physical much more involved and I mean here This is the big news of Mountain Blade 2, the <laughs> siege. Walk me through what we're seeing here. Okay, well, this is our, our siege gameplay, and really this is kind of one of the areas of the game where players wanted to see most improvement from us. So what we did is we, we worked a lot, we added in loads of different mechanics, so we've got things like destruction now, you've got ballistae, mangonels, and obviously as the player, you can just push your soldier aside, grab one, fire right at that battlement, blast a piece of it off, and uh, you're essentially very, very involved in the fight. Um, we have uh, like multiple planes of attack now as well, and you get yeah, to deploy, yeah. choose how you, you approach each castle. And right now, how many players are there on each side, or excuse me, humans on each side in this fight? Well, yeah, essentially this is um, uh, one of our single player sieges, and we have like 350 guys on our side, and the defenders have a bit less on 150. So there's about 500 total, um, all operating indiv individually, acting independently, uh, using their own attacks and blocks. But we can push that a little bit further in the final game, we think. And how, how does a siege evolve over time? What's the beginning, middle, and end of a siege? Well, essentially, you're, you're doing a siege to, to take over some land, right? Ex exploit the natural resources and sort of gain more money because you, you sort of expanded your faction. Um, so you spend some time on the campaign map bombarding, wow. doing some damage to the castle, and then you get into the fight and have this huge, dramatic, climactic battle um, against the enemy. I mean, I understand that so much of the inspiration from the game is just historical research. How does that factor? Yeah, I imagine exactly. it would be. I mean, that's a huge part all of historical research, game, I mean, history, all these what what events are kind of like based around the, the methodologies of previous um, battles. I mean, oh, like shit. Castle, real, oh, like, dropping the hot right? oil it's from the really roof. Hard thing to do. <laughs> and so once you're trying to smash down that gate, you've got the defenders from above, like throwing rocks, throwing uh, jars of oil all over you, and uh, you're having a really hard time fighting this very historically um, themed castle. I mean, the, the scope of it is just incredible. And I mean, I know with all the intricate systems, not just the combat, but the political, the economic system, that modding is a really big part of Mountain Blade as well. Ah, oh, crap. We have a small interruption in the stream here again. Absolutely. I mean, modding has been part of Mountain Blade right from the very start. I mean, from the very beta of the first game, we had uh, modders coming in. And it's really sort of helped to fuel our community growth and helped to actually kind of fuel development in a way as well. We've taken a lot of ideas from the modding scene. Um, so in Battle, we try to give back to the community uh, because we, we love them so much. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to give them all of the tools which we use for development. And also we're going to allow them to combine mods. So someone might make a mod which changes something about diplomacy. I like the idea of that actually being able to combine mods because that's essentially some, scale, some of the mod community, community doesn't like the idea like of actually taking one mod and putting it with somebody else's to actually make a combination mod. It's the reason why we have a major problem with the mod well, community on console because people are making package mods that are actually multiple ones put together. 
seem to be having issues with the stream here. I don't know why. I wonder if it's actually Blade, on my end, is it? Give me a second here to check. So for coming out and about no, it is not. Too. But it's on their end? Now, our next video piece is from the maker of Lords of the Fallen, creating another game inspired by Dark Souls, but in this realm, it is in a side. Yeah, we're continuing to actually have a series of problems here. Um, I'm checking to see take a look at the surge. if there's an issue with the up and down rates on my connection, but it doesn't appear to be. Changing the world is easy. Governments, corporations, they've always done it. Until this is all that's left. Slowly by deck 13? The solar rays, forged from imperfection, steeled by technology. Where are the cogs in their machines? And yet we struggle on. Ooh! Hey, visceral looking combat. Mech suits and nexus suits. Ooh! <laughs> I like that. We are human, so we fight. But are we fighting for our future? So it's. Or theirs. Humans and exosuits versus mechanoids? The Surge! Cool, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So this is the reason why I actually don't mind watching the PC conference because play. there's a lot of games that will be advertised on here that are not year, just for one system. They're not just PC games. Project and they Blue will Street. tend to actually and be ignored by the main releasers of, of uh, games or the main, main in the game. holders of the conference now. because they have the ones that are marketed to and marketing control to. And I always like to hear about the games that are a little bit more below the line, which Welcome PC games to tend to focus on. In the rebuilt California key. Uh, Lawbreakers, the which uh, obviously has been out on a bit of a beta lately. I remember watching Total Biscuits review and commentary on it. Class based uh, shooter with a um, less humor base but more action base uh, one on one arena balance rather than actually being a synergistic. I like that. I've actually liked that phrase being used about uh, Overwatch being synergistic with multiple players working together as a team. This one is essentially arena deathmatch, like with um, any one person being able to do what the others can do. The ninja the or scout or whatever it is with the tether and sword. So it, it looks like a really fun game. Uh, it, does, it feels like the kind of game that I'd probably get my ass beat on because it's kind of on individual merit with a class, rather than actually being really heavily based on working together. I love that, like, that even using the tether to grab onto another player and use them to pull your momentum. So you grab onto one of the like that's where. Admittedly, they said there wasn't synergy, but there obviously is because you can use that to increase your mobility around the stage. Cliffy B! Hey, Cliff! How's it going, He's not Cliffy Cliff B nice anymore. Shoes. He's Cliffy Blinsky, Blinsky, Blinsky again. Those are, kicks, Those are great. I'm at the age where I just want him to be comfortable. That's all I really care about. <laughs> and I got to cast Ice Tea again. How awesome is that? <laughs> this ain't Utopia. Well, uh -huh. outside of shoots. I want to jump straight into talking about your game. Absolutely. Right away, the movement, the motion, the verticality sticks out. Uh, the speed out. of it me about that is pretty cool. Because, it, I mean, it harkens back to, like, Quake uh, and Unreal days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the thing is, is, you know, we've talked about those kinds of games, and I think they're doing a new Quake, which looks pretty cool as well. Um, but it's really important to note that what we're doing is evolving this kind of game for kind of a new generation that expects kind of abilities uh, and characters that uh, are I just kind of love that. that is, as long as you keep right. one tether so line the core of the core to use, I mean, you only have so many game, uses of uh, that first thing shooters, whenever you're actually, actually running around. The movement. It's how to you use it through the environment, to get yourself back onto the map so you never have that fourth edge of the map and you're dead kind of thing. You can actually, like, trail other people up after you. like, catch a wall and just swing your ass back up again. jumping tribes, skiing little vibe going on in there. And then when you add in... Zero G and low gravity and blind firing behind you, it gets really, really interesting. Yeah, that's one that I actually haven't seen really done in a shoot em up before. The um, idea of blind firing as you run so that you can actually give yourself covering fire as you escape, which will make uh, capture the flag missions and such really interesting. Near future and whatnot, after an earthquake and humanity manages to rebuild Los Angeles properly without all the darn cars. It's a very ambitious yeah. plan for Los Angeles. It's, 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 it's really a little property like without, of, a without all of the cars. Town. I love this town, but I hate it. That's the description of describing LA. Traffic, so it's like, if we could 
have like the big dig in LA and put all the cars underground self-driving, then we could have like lovely Frank Gehry architecture everywhere. And you know, the, the Santa Monica Pier is reimagined with the, you know, it's not just a Ferris wheel, but it's like omnidirectional now, you know, <laughs> along with a big zero G pocket in the middle. And I mean, in terms of just the gameplay, what has it been like to try to balance all the different motion routes that players can go through? It, it's when there's so it's much freedom. It's completely unbalanced right now. <laughs> and that's why we're actually going to be doing the public alpha. And so when we do these public alphas, yeah. we actually say, come help break this game with us. You know, we've had some streamers who are already playing the game giving us, uh, you know, feedback on the health stations or feedback on the player speed and movement. Right. And we're having these boiling debates inside the studio. And I tell everyone, get used to it because this is part of the process of 2016 and beyond and making a living product with your fans. Yeah. You know, I have that's to pretty ask cool. Right that's away. an, that's an so interesting statement. And just you know, our game is completely unbalanced at the moment. Like we have no fucking idea how this is going to work. So they said you have to um, break it apart and rebuild it again, just to actually kind of cover for all the ridiculousness you can get away with. Talking on Twitter, um, the fact that you know, if Overwatch is Street Fighter, we're going to be Mortal Kombat. You know, Overwatch feels like it's kind of skewed, you know, towards a, a kind of an anime fan type vibe, right? And it's a, a fantastic game. My wife is mm -hmm. really good at Mercy, by the way. Don't go up against her. She gets to play the game every time. Um, but we're like kind of the Western version of that that actually has, you know, a little bit of cursing, a little bit of gore. You know, it's not gratuitous, but, you know, we're going yeah. back to the kind of the roots of a shooter where you can actually do a star fall down and boom, cause people to explode. Well, awesome. I mean, you talked about alpha plans. What is yeah, the most specific timeline? That's, in so to that? basically, what he's we're very, doing he's very he's real talking here, and I mean that's one of the reasons why everybody does like Cliffy B. Where we're doing a public alpha, and it's actually on the 18th of June this weekend. Where if you go to PCGamer.com, you can enter your name and possibly get in. There's only a limited amount of tickets that you can get in for that, and preloading will start on there the 16th. Go. So you're not sitting there on the 18th eating up all your bandwidth downloading the darn game. So basically, what we're building up to is early access for everyone. I'm not revealing that date yet in regards to when the game's you know, right. paid and whatnot. And the alpha free. goal is early access you, on Steam. There's no non-disclosure on the 18th here. You can stream the game. You can put it on YouTube. You can tweet me, uh, tweet Lawbreakers. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you hate. Call us assholes. I don't really care. Just give <laughs> us your feedback. That's what we're going for. <laughs> oh, yep. they will. Cliff, Real I talk. Love it. Real and talk I with Cliffy you B. will get that feedback. And I'm excited to play the game. I'm, I'm excited gonna tweet to ship at you. It. I want to get access. Once again, pcgamer.com slash law. I believe that there were several thousand keys available, but they're all gone, guaranteed. Oh, Good problem to have. Of course. So, ladies and gentlemen, Cliff Lazinski from Lawbreakers, thank you so much for coming out, Cliff. It's a pleasure. Now, we brought some developers on to talk about their upcoming games and their upcoming content, but Another very important group in the industry is the players themselves creating new strategies to use against each other. And that content, that spectacle, has exploded into the world of esports, a world very personal and near and dear to me. So to talk about it, let's look at this video clip from Yahoo Esports. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Renee for Yahoo Esports. We wanted to take a moment during this year's PC Gaming Show to celebrate esports. Before esports had all this money in it, uh, it was a very grassroots situation. But it wasn't really until the recent years, as we saw the advent of online streaming and some of these bigger esports titles, that things have really gotten huge. I've been involved with Street Fighter since the early 90s when it came out in arcades. Yeah. We have a lot of tournaments like we do now. So 25 years later, so the esports there's focus just this and function, massive I mean, growth, and it's, what, it's amazing to see where the game has gone and where it could potentially a massive, go. This is a really uh, exciting time for community too, as is, it's getting five, bigger, EG pulled off and that's, there really is going to be a massive amount of focus on esports in the future. Like, where we are, we are in a post-streaming um, world, we're in a post-Twitch world, stuff like this is really serious, man. I remember serious, way back man. in 2011, watching the League of Legends Season 1 Finals hit 100,000 viewers concurrently on stream, and that was when I knew League of Legends was here to stay. My first stadium event was uh, an IEM, and I remember when I was watching Counter-Strike there that every single time someone hit like a really sick flick shot with an op, the whole audience like reacted like someone had scored a touchdown. <laughs> From Fallen and CSGO, Faker and League of Legends, and Fear and Dota 2, it is incredible to see everyday gamers rise to superstar. EVO Moment 37 is probably the most defining moment in fighting games and possibly esports history. It's a moment that drew so much attention and brought players into the scene. You can talk to so many different players who uh, point to that defining moment as classic. the time they got into fighting. Yeah, games. everybody knows that video. 
Dag one unleashes the, the beast. When I was at BlizzCon in 2015, and the Heroes of the Storm audience was all the way to the very back of the giant, giant convention center. They even had to take out a wall to allow for more people to watch. It was insane. The introduction of live streaming and Twitch has exploded viewership of esports in a way I don't think anyone really thought possible. The prize pools are getting bigger, the viewership numbers are getting bigger, and there's more monetary sponsors, and I'm so excited to see where it goes. The future of esports is happening right now. It's growing every day. With the introduction of more and more games like Overwatch or Hearthstone, esports can only get bigger as time goes on. It can only gain more fans. It can only become more exciting. Nature of games, man. Somebody's got to make a profit off of it. If you don't follow esports, now's as good a time to start as any any uh, League of Legends or Dota 2 or Counter Strike watchers, any StarCraft players out there in the audience today. Esports fans, there we go. Start now. Just go to Twitch. It's all over the place. Now, in addition, <laughs> I think that's pretty much the point. To the industry, the technologists are as well, constantly creating new innovations for us to play with. So, joining me on the stage today is the lead sponsor of the PC Gaming Show, here to talk about some new goodies. Join me in welcoming from AMD the CEO, Lisa Su. Hi there. Hello, Head of Hi, AMD. It's good to see you. I'm, I'm really not. Show. What about it's individual you? kind of like games coming out in this. I think this entire segment is going to get away about Polaris. You know what? Split we down into a much more Polaris. kind of like you know, individual game basis review um, or commentary. We're getting ready to launch it, and Polaris is all about getting the best gaming experiences to as many gamers as possible. Okay. And you know, most gamers have a budget, and it's usually around a hundred to three hundred dollars. That's about eighty-four percent of the market. And for us, we're trying to get extremely enthusiast class performance at those types of price points so that all gamers can enjoy that kind of performance. And I know it's not just the hardware side, but also the software side. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've doubled down on software, you know, game-ready drivers, working on the new APIs like DX12 and Vulkan. And we have a, a little bit of a treat to show you what we can do with Polaris and the guys at id on the new game Doom. Let's go ahead and take a look okay, at so AMD, on Polaris. Show us what you can do to actually catch up with the fact that you've been having issues with drivers for a long time. Hi, I'm Marty, and this is Robert. We're back here today working on a number of updates for Doom, and specifically Doom running on Vulkan. Gamers can look forward to a buttery smooth experience in Doom on Polaris, supporting a wide range of hardware and gamer budgets. We believe the experience on AMD will be hard to beat across all hardware. Want to play Doom on your laptop on the train home? Polaris plus Vulcan is going to make that possible. Bottom line is, you're not going to need a $700 video card to enjoy Doom at fantastic frame rates. Yeah, I just read. Like the, this Polaris thing is the external box that you Lisa, plug into your system a return. Last to get a year boost a of power. This year we got a box. Isn't it? The box is bigger this year. What's in the box? <laughs> Look, hey, we couldn't come to the PC gaming show without showing off some new technology. So let's see what we got here. We are showing off for the very first time the entire Polaris lineup, our three cards. So let me take you through them. First, let's start with the Radeon RX 480. This is our newest card for premium VR. Cool. And this is disruptive. This gets premium VR at $199 and above price points, and we love this card going on sale starting June 29th. Right. It may be time for me to actually sell out my spare cards and, uh, and start saving for a new one. We have other cards here, which are pretty exciting as well. We have the RX 470 and the RX 460. The 470 is really focused on excellent performance per watt, so it's 2.8x over the previous generation. And you get full HD experiences, 1080p running 60 frames per second, gorgeous card. We'll have many, many different versions of this from our add-in board partners. And then we have the 460, which is really focused on eSports. So I heard about all those eSports fans in the audience. This guy is going to be the best card in the industry. Less than 75 watts, cool, fast. I think you're going to love these cards. So we're really yeah, excited so about the e our like, Having a card dedicated towards eSports would be more the fact of having, you know, not having the power 
but having the consistency you know, so you don't have uh, spikes it's not just that these in the game, I suppose. And you because a lot of these the board games don't VR really backpack, which I was completely run the by. heaviest so either. About that today. So it's or you don't run the cool games things. at the heaviest I mean, you know, settings. Do so you want to maintain frame VR. rate? VR has the opportunity to put incredible number of new applications there. Oh, shit. And it's not shit. just about the hardware, but it's about how we work with our OEMs. So my friend Renee here, part of the AMD Red Team, is showing off a new Alienware reference design using the RX 480. Yeah. And you can see the entire PC is in that backpack with the graphics card, and you're able to run, you know, full wearable systems of VR experiences. We knew it was this, coming. Uh, reference design. So is that we knew it was here. I mean, yeah. So this is the sort of thing that you could like take to an open field and be able to just wander around as opposed to just being in a room doing what I do, like punching the wall when I'm playing a VR game. That's actually that's absolutely right. Who wants to be sitting down? You know, you want to be able to do everything that you want to do. There we go. The VR there's so there's really AMD's little push. I'm sure there's uh, alternate systems RX. and there's going to be plenty of variety for that, but power supply wise, a little bit about your work with if you can run a consistent yeah, so look, Vive um, game. Oh, does the Vive have the front facing camera? The cards, the OEMs, but it's also about the software. If Vive has a front facing camera, then you're pretty much shifted from VR, static to active game immersion no matter where you are in the world. You know, Crow Team is ultra famous sure. for all the You get a 480, you get yourself a GPS. And what we do is help them develop VR content actually using our multiple GPU features. You know, so what I'd like to say is, you know, we each have two eyes. Don't you think we should have two GPUs? That is perfectly logical. <laughs> so let's see some of what Crow Team is doing. Yeah, it's really it exciting. Serious Sam in VR. Oh. Devolver Digital? Okay. Looks to me like things just got seriously real. <laughs> Serious Sam VR? Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Sam's probably the best choice for VR as well. That's pretty cool. Get ready to get serious. Let's get serious. Cool. <laughs> I still laugh. <laughs> we love time. serious Sam, so. Now, outside of GPUs, tell me about the CPU side of things on AMD. All right, that's a little bit of a secret. But um, <laughs> look, we love CPUs. We think you know, they really go in a pair. And we've been doing a, quite a bit of development on, on CPUs. We have a new development called Zen. Zen is going first into enthusiast class desktop processors for gamers, and we've really optimized around you know, high performance, eight yeah, cores, yeah. 16 threads, really exciting stuff. Um, Sean, I wanted to bring the lab here, but I needed the engineers to do some work. So. That, that, that would have been an odd show to have the lab on stage, and I'm glad that you brought the video to, uh, to allow us to take a look at the new Summit Ridge line. <laughs> we awkward wing to the crowd. Hey, baby, I know you're watching. You like know, what you see? Check out my silicon. update from the AMD Bring Up Lab. We've thing. been testing out the Zen Core, <laughs> and we've been doing our integration level tests, our feature enablement, and we have Summit Ridge running Doom. Right. I suppose, is Doom considered the benchmark for a pretty game at the moment? So I think this is actually the whole point of... I am... Zen. Today's moment of CPU Zen. Lisa, thank you so much for coming out today. It's been a pleasure to see all the new goodies. We are extremely excited about what we can do this year. And Sean, thank you. And all PC gamers, AMD is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Sue from AMD. Good for her. And again, thanks for putting on the show again this year. It's a lot of fun. Now, let's oh, talk Oh, yeah, I completely forgot. This games. is actually a sponsored show from uh, AMD, so they kind of had the is from the sponsor. makers of Life is Strange and Remember Me, the studio Don't Nod. Don't Nod. Let's take some first exclusive look at some gameplay footage of Vampire. You know, What's this? Oh, Vampire? Yeah. So why don't I? What does it mean? 
that I'm dead too? You're a vampire. Moving on. Steady, boys. We got one of them here. Uh, so, bit of a Dark Soulsy kind of thing going on with a Dampier and Dampier Vampir. Well, refill your stamina. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, well, you did burn him, so I mean, suppose you're going to get a real hitting. So, a decrepit city where people have failed to live. Uh, sorry, guys, that is not a yawn of boredom. That is just actually a uh, kind of like strain yawn. Looks like a good game. And um, I'm interested in the stuff that Don't Nod put out. But really, I'm waiting for Life is Strange Episode 2. <laughs> I don't mean to be awkward Awfully about that, but it's just the fact Life that I really Strange. enjoyed that series. Eh? So I'm looking forward to more <laughs> narrative structured games like that. Now our next guests were here last year where they were talking about the updates to their gore engine technology. And here, they're excited to talk about upcoming content. It's for Killing Floor 2. Let's welcome Tripwire Interactive. Killing Floor. John Gibson. PC game, violent as fuck. Pretty much what people thought. Like, whenever you look at Doom and you look at Killing Floor, the two of them actually kind of have a very PC similar game. thing going on. This is John, please murder on here. the floor. I'm going to ask you the easiest question ever. What's coming up with Killing Floor 2? What's coming up? Okay, so Killing Floor 2, it's been out in early access for a little while. So it yeah. came out last year. Yeah, ever so slightly. we've got four major content packs for it. We have a really exciting one coming up called Bullseye. And it's got uh, more weapons, more ways to kill the monsters, more way to kill players as the monsters. It's really exciting. You get to play as a Zed. You get to play as the Zeds. Mm, nom, 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 nom. Now, in terms of that experience of having it in early access, what has that been like to have so many people getting to play for so long and giving you the feedback leading up to this content patch? Oh, it's, it's been really great. It's, we, we've learned so much. You know, we've developed analytic system to measure, you know, how... You know, what people like, what people don't like, because it's, really? it's really hard when you have like a million all people like, all shouting things at you at the it's same time. It's crazy like how much tell what, what games really, really develop around but, the fact uh, that they this, know this, what this, you this do in their update, game. A lot of their feedback into the game. Kind of missed that and whole really development cycle of a game being made feedback. so that you're so meant to kind of feedback. get into the mind of the developer. But um, just the nature, of nature, of the basic nature of technology. Like they can, I think, can pull back real data and change their expectations as they go along. It's a great idea for them. Previously on the killing floor. Revenge of the Zeds. Oh shit! Nice shot. This is all stuff that has actually been out for a fairly long time. And developed by the community, of course. And developed by the you know, people who have been playing on early access on PC for a while. Like, if this looks at knowledge, I mean, this is. This is schmuppy killing lunacy. Mmm. John, you're going to have to walk me through a little bit of that action. Tell me what we just saw. It's a lot okay, of stuff. Okay, so you saw the, the new sharpshooter perk. It's all about killing the monsters from the long range. You saw the right. really cool new weapon, the Horzine Tech Railgun. It's this beast railgun that you can knock those giant mo monsters right on their butts. Um, new characters. We've got some community maps that we're taking official. Yeah, no, walk me through that process. How did that go from just something the community made to actually being part of the game proper? So we had this, uh, we had this community Because map people playing them constantly. The mapping contest. And so now we're, we're taking those best maps, we're, we're helping them polish them up, and then we're uh -huh. shipping them as part of the game. That's so cool. So people in the community are actually getting their content in the full game. And That's I pretty mean, cool for the modders and creators. The term full game, Killing Floor 2 has been in early access for a long time. It's free time. practice What's and rehearsed content, really? When does it leave early access? Well, we're planning on it leaving early access this fall. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we can officially announce that this fall you're going to be able to get your hands on the full version of the game. 
And also, one thing really exciting, actually I'd like to do right now, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't normally pull my phone out uh, in the middle of an interview, but uh, you know, all that cool stuff that you got, just saw, hold on, it's live right now. Oh, that's You can play so, oh, the update you. right now. Did, did you actually do anything on your phone or is that just a prop phone? I, that's just a sound. <laughs> But somebody on the other side of the planet pushed a button that released the update. Okay, no, that makes a lot more sense. That was their cue. Yeah, because I don't know if you could hear this in the audience, but when he hit it, it actually began to play a sound. <laughs> and I was like, that's a lot of effort. You could have just said it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, would actually, I, I would well, wonder, yeah. like, some devs uh, actually, like, I literally have a button that makes a noise. There's something it's like, extra kill them all, kill them all, today. kill them yes, all. Is, release uh, the hounds. Just, just real quick. At least the uh, therapy for hounds. Two, for those of you that haven't got to try it, we're starting a free weekend Ooh. on Steam, starting Thursday, running to Monday. So if you want to play it, you haven't got a chance, you want to fight as the monsters, because we just added that, go do that. We do have one more thing. Well, John, what's the one more thing? Well, actually, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take over you know, hosting the show for a minute. You know, we have from Oculus Development, uh, Anna Sweet to help us announce. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Anna Sweet from Oculus. Okay. So. Anna, come join us. Killing for two Oculus support. What are you doing here? Well, I've known the team at Tripwire for a long time, so I'm really excited to be here today to help them announce a new game uh, called Killing Floor Incursion. If you think the Killing Floor universe is intense, wait until you check it out in VR with Oculus Touch. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, and I, I understand this is not a translation. Okay. Any floor Oculus support. Oh, right. So they're essentially made a survival y kind of version. Ooh. Okay. Ha <laughs> Throwing the gun from one to the other. So, Incursion, it's actually a standalone game using the original Killing Floor. Alright, to the Oculus Touch specifically, which is uh, something that the Vive already has, of course, but the Oculus Touch has been pushing and talking about for a while now. Yeah, I'm curious about that because the touch actually has haptic feedback when you're using it, which is going to then be a more powered issue. So are they going to run internal battery and then that's going to drain battery? Um, motors like that tend to actually be a bit intense. Super hot. Super hot. So there's been a bit of a discussion about this uh, because of taking a lump of money for Super Hot to get it exclusive on the Oculus and not available to the Vive. But none of my business. Developers, be developers, make your money, do what you need to do. Super Hot was a very successful game for what it was, which is pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. Here's some gameplay. It looks like kind of game that should be played in VR. Oh, 
Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Thrown from one hand to the other. Oh, right. Ha! That's pretty funny. <laughs> the fact that you're playing super hot, you take yourself out of the game, but you have to actually put yourself into the game. That's a nice little touch, so you actually have your helmet on, you're ready to use it, but you have to lift a fictional version of the helmet and put that over your head. Obsidian Entertainment introduces. <clears throat> I'm gonna get myself a drink of liquid here because I'm gonna run out of fuel. Oh shit! <laughs> Looks like the dude from Looking for Group, the Necromancer. I do like the art style on this, it's pretty cool. Like, art style for the narrative -y bits here are very um, reminiscent of Banner Saga. The vile power of tyranny. Oh, we got a wee issue with the camera here. Need to do something to fix that up. Just a second. <laughs> and I'm back. Ooh! Oh, data in those walls. Okay. Observer, as in one who watches. Maybe a watcher? Who's the observer in this game? Are we the observer? Is that the observer? Is there even the observer? I don't know. Told us sweet fuck all. Okay, Libertine, tell us a little bit more because you have told us nothing so far. That is awful. It's a terrible tie, dude. Don't know who wore the dress to your mother. I'm being mean about it. It's a fucking tie. It's not bad. What am I saying? I'm sitting on a Canadian ice hockey top. I'm not Canadian. Bluebird team. I can hack your mind. You've not saved often. You're a reckless player, Snake. What have you done? I can't read your mind! I just swift to the... Oh, I was trying to go... I was going to do the Snake voice, but I didn't have it. <clears throat> Giver, Giver, Giver. I just switched the controls. Now tell me, what did you do to Meryl? Oh, God. Now she wants me, but she's not herself. Does this count as consent?
Yeah, it would be. You hacked me once. Shame on me. Uh, hacked me twice. Camera protects the error 404. Okay. An odd environment that like digitally scan like this. I have somebody else hacking your eyesight. <clears throat> Weird. I have the greatest fear about actually getting ocular implants. Somebody hacking your eyes. Oh yeah. So I imagine actually being like light patterns being used as the hack code. Okay. You're obviously wired in. Say hello to my little friend. Just gonna stick you a little bit. Gonna jack myself in here a wee touch. You don't mind? There we go. Hello, brain! So, yeah, Cyberpunk. This is one of the things I've actually, like, never really talked about. Uh, I really enjoy Cyberpunk games. So why are we not seeing more of them? Uh, we're going to see Proceeding to Project Red's one coming out fairly soon, but, um... We don't see, uh... I, th I think it's a genre that actually is on its way back. We've been missing it for a while. Jason! 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 <laughs> Apparently it thinks I said someone else all together on the screen. Or does anyone listen to this? What? Me or to the actual show? <laughs> if you want to watch the stream without me talking, then go watch a stream without me talking in it. <laughs> go fuck yourself, bendejo. Uh Christ, I didn't even pay attention to what this one was. A bunch of mech suits? Looks intense, 15 months of RTS. That's... okay. An RTS that doesn't take half an hour, 45 minutes to play? I get on board with that. Fast paced? I need to look up more about that drop zone that I just showed. Ooh, armor three. So, uh, more stuff for Daisy. <laughs> So what is coming next for Armor 3?
A really nice development studio, actually. See, so imagine they have to actually blur out the people they're doing mocap because they're probably active soldiers being brought in to do this. <laughs> Shiny. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder, like, with, with a jungly terrain, with an actual more kind of, like, um, wetlands, you're not going to have as many urban... In fact, would it probably not make it easier for those DayZ mods and all those kind of things to run? Because it always seems to be chugging whenever it goes to the cities. Anytime I've ever seen them being played. Cool. Right, here we go. So this is the kind of thing that I actually, I watch other streamers for. Frankie on 1080p is amazing with the stuff he does in Arma. So it'll be really fun to check out. Huh, I like the multiple camera feeds. And not that long to wait either, really? Wow. So I'm assuming Apex isn't just Armor 3, it's uh, Armor 3 expansion. Kind of like uh, Allied Ops and that kind of stuff was whenever Armor 2 was out. Fair play. Fair play. That's kind of cool because essentially they know how active their mod community is and they don't want to have a situation where new content comes up that they can't have access to because they just don't have time to make the mods as soon as the game comes out. Fair play. That's active participation in your uh, modding community. Wow, this is really quiet. 
Oh, I've seen, um, this is a, uh, bring me the moon or bring me to the moon? Is that what I think it is? Nothing instructional, learn through mechanics. Show, don't tell. Okay. So very it seems very exploratory. Okay, alright. Pulling charge from one thing, putting into another, unlocking doors, puzzling yourself around. Interesting. Curious to know more about it. Assuming this is actually it's very portal esque, uh, lab exploration y kind of thing. Lots of locked doors. Even uses the light bridges. <laughs> okay. The Turing test. Oh, okay. So, uh, assuming people know what the Turing test is. But uh, it seems to pretty much be testing your ability to... Uh, it reminds me, uh, testing your ability to solve puzzles and uh, think for yourself and think about um, action probably has no instructional bit information at all. Just watch and do. Which is even Portal still managed to do the sh tell don't show kind of thing. If it's narrative, of course. I'm mildly awkward on the stage. Good luck to you, girl. You did a really good job. Oh, never sounds good. Oh, God, yeah, really, life in general is very stressful. It's a horrible, horrible thing having to wake up in the morning and do anything. Ooh! I like this, it's kind of like, um, thought of it as like being a modern interpretation of, uh, Oregon Trail, you know? First access run 3 begins June 13th. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Overland Game, uh, giving out free keys to it. That's actually a game I would seriously consider trying. It just it has a nice charm to the... <laughs> charm to its design. Dual universe? Okay. 
So very like our uh, Subnautica style game, but in space. Ooh, wow. So what are we doing in this universe? More important question. Duel the game. Yeah, it does feel like there is a few games coming out in the same space as No Man's Sky, really, in this way. Well, No Man's Sky seems to actually go with a very, not so narratively driven, but uh, event driven universe, just. It it's essentially feels like um, Skyriming in space, in a way. You create your own legend, but without um, more of an MMO slant. So, uh, it, it's uh, the the speed of games, I mean, there's what? Daisy-esque games, or survival, there's um, the calling that will be coming... There is that... I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head. It's not World War Z or something. War Z, War Z. Our arc survival evolved and stuff, but just like doing this on one conceptual shard is a bit different and pretty impressive.
yeah, Dual Universe seems to be exactly what I thought it was and what I said it was. It's a large community building an existing game. Um, I don't know. Essentially, the resource gathering and the material sourcing and all that kind of thing seems to be the uh, always the sticking point for that. If people stick around or not, if they can find it easily enough, if they can get the supplies they need and they don't feel they've actually been removed from it. So now we're looking at Razor's hardware LED, OLED light up keyboards and lunacy. These things look gorgeous, but I mean, what, 140, 200 pounds on a keyboard? I don't know. I don't like them that much. Like I said, I don't keyboard and mouse game that often. I have to say the stream quality here on the PC game uh, gamer one is a little bit not dubious, but it's like it flips up and down. Some of these videos are not normalized well enough to actually kind of like keep this, the audio levels throughout. So I wish I actually was. Uh, I'm wishing for future streams that I actually, if I'm doing something like the E3 ones, even if I do it for the Sony one later on, is to run the audio out of the system into my mixing, mixing desk and back in again as a separate uh, track because that way I could change this a lot easier without having to take a fluke around and things and possibly mess up the audio by turning them too high in places. Maybe this will work. Whoa, okay. See, this is what happens. Damn the man! So, who we just saw uh, talking about Halo Wars at the Microsoft conference? We've already seen the trailer for this, which it looks kind of impressive. I mean, I, I yeah, it's going to be on PC on Windows 10 PCs. Um, Halo Wars was actually a fairly playable RTS on consoles. It was the one that I actually found the controls worked the best with. Um, I've played a, a lot of the Command and Conquerors and stuff whenever they translate them across the console. And wow, that they were very, very, very unplayable <laughs> for a lot of reasons. I mean, any of the consoles that allowed you to play a keyboard and mouse and you were going to play Command Conquer, you generally plugged them in and used them because it was kind of hellish. I think there was actually a fair amount of them of the CNC3 games were actually on PS2, weren't they? Or Xbox? So you could use USB mouses and keyboards with those perfectly fine. Something's gone wrong here. Something's gone horribly wrong with the video. Hang on a second, see if I can actually fix up the problem. Weird. I'll be back in a second, guys, while he's watching the show. You can hear the show perfectly fine according to this, but you can't see what's going on.
That's a little bit odd. I don't know when, how long ago that actually happened with the video stream, um, because the video playback was working perfectly fine on my end. But um, really apologize for anybody who was actually watching the stream there, and we weren't getting the visuals for the conference. So yeah, of course, Halo Wars being commented on. Um, and it's, I said everything I was going to say during the Microsoft conference. So uh, if you want to, if you want my comments on that, go and hit the time code and check it out on the actual stream because that, that video is up on YouTube now, so you can go and watch it there, or you can watch it in the archive of this. It's, it's a good game series. I'm glad to see it back. I'm not too sure how it's going to work with 343 running it. They do have Creative Assembly from the Total War series kind of working on the back end for them. So, it could be good, it could be bad. I mean, the Total War has actually had its issues over the years, so why would we assume that's going to be a good one from 343 with Creative Assembly and Assistance? And most of the time, whenever Total Creative Assembly mess up a game, they tend to patch it well in after thought. Um, I know Angry Joe dislikes them a fair bit from uh, my experiences of watching his videos for the way they mistreated some games, but I mean, that's him at his most uh, cartoonishly angry whenever he was chatting about those because he's such a big fan of the series. I mean, that's the thing. PC RTS is a home, like, it's a home for RTS. What is this? So they're doing a World War II insurgency. I'm trying to think. Like I don't know the insurgency game. I know I've seen video of it at some point. Kill those fucking crowds! A day that will live in infamy. Infamy, infamy. They've all got it in for me. Okay. Seriously, just another uh, World War II game, so I've got nothing to say about that, actually. I mean, honestly, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, heard of this. You enchanted swords. Right? To counter the magic that they're shooting at you.
I like the style and design. It's a the art style is pretty enjoyable to watch. Um, I mean the animation is not quite as fluid. I, mean, I could see in a lot of ways, but it's actually very very enjoyable. Oh, we lost the stream again. <clears throat> Right. So we're going to actually quickly stop the stream and start it up again for the Ubisoft stream. That's obviously the end of our PC gaming show. Thank you very much for watching.